Hello, beautiful and lovely people. It is Sunday, NaNoWriMo day 11. It is a beautiful fall day. And I just thought that I would come on here and talk to you guys because I was so exhausted yesterday. I don't even know if what I filmed was coherent. Um, the wedding was amazing. Hold on one second. There's a car coming by. I'm practicing my no caring thing. Hey! While I film, vlog, I'm getting a lot better at it. Of course, Teddy decides that he's gonna use the bathroom right here. But as I was saying, um, the wedding was amazing. I had so much fun. St. Cloud is such a beautiful, tiny little community. And it was such like a pleasure and an honor to stand beside my best friend, one of my best friends, as she got married on Friday evening. So proud of her and all that she's accomplished in her life and the beautiful, wonderful, amazing people that she's managed to surround herself with. As I was saying, the beautiful, amazing people that she's managed to surround herself with and the community that she's built for herself. She has a wonderful family and I enjoyed having the opportunity to meet the ones that I hadn't met and see the ones that I hadn't seen in over a decade. So that was really cool. Now, Teddy's still trying to poop. I think the poor thing has indigestion because nothing's coming out. So lesson learned, don't vlog while your dog is trying to poop. It usually never works out well. Anywho, as I was saying, I'm so proud of my friend and the amazing community that she's built around herself there in St. Cloud in Florida. And, you know, having grown up in Staten Island her entire life with her parents moving to St. Cloud and her choosing to follow behind them after college was a really big decision because in a way, all she'd ever known was living in, was living in Staten Island in New York. And, you know, when we went to school together at NYU, she built a support system of, fr of friends. And, you know, it's hard to leave behind like a life that you've always known and to start over and essentially start from scratch. And she's done a wonderful job of building up an amazing life. So it was so cool to see all the people that came to support her all the other bridesmaids, the girls were really great. And I feel like I met some truly strong and amazing women. And we got to be a part of her special day. So I'm appreciative of the fact that I got to spend time with those girls. And we're going to stay in touch. But yeah, so it was a good time. But it was extremely busy. I tried to film when I could. As you guys saw, my plan to get ahead in my word count was a complete fail. And I ended up just waking up early each day and getting my words in for that day before the chaos started <laughs> each and every day before the wedding. And I'm proud of myself because even on her wedding day, I woke up early and I got my words in. So, but yeah, my plan to like write all day on Wednesday, complete fail. Work turned out to be quite busy, which was very unexpected. I didn't see that coming. And then... When I got home that night, I had to pack and head out to the airport. And I didn't realize how exhausted I was. And when I got to the airport, I did not want to write at all. I did not want to write on the flight. By the time I did get into Florida, it was very early Thursday morning, like 1 a.m. And at that point, I just went straight to sleep. But I'm grateful for the fact that I woke up early on Thursday morning, which was the day before the wedding. And on the wedding day on Friday morning, I'm no, you're in trouble now. For those of you wondering what Teddy picked up, so my neighborhood is right next door to like a whole bunch of medical buildings and I like to walk him through the parking lot, as you can see, because on the weekends it's pretty empty and there's no one here and it's just like more for him to explore. Well, long story short, he saw a Q-tip and he loves Q-tips by the way, but this was one of those big like medical grade Q-tips and he saw it on the ground and I just, I wasn't watching him as closely as I should and he picked it up. And this has only happened once before and I walked through these grounds and it was like, I don't even remember what it was. It was like a, some food that someone had left on the ground and he ate it and he got really sick. Now for me, oh, now for me, it worries me because 
you know, these are medical facilities and if someone dropped a medical grade Q-tip, I don't know what substance was on that Q-tip. I don't know what it was used for. So I just don't want him to get sick. I don't want him to get like some type of disease or infection or something. But I just have to trust that if worse comes to worse, he just throws up and I can clean that up. But it's definitely gonna give me anxiety until he either throws up or he's perfectly fine. But I try to watch him as close as I can and I wish the parking lot was actually, you know, cleaner and there wasn't like trash on the freaking ground. But what can you do? He seems to be doing all right, but he loves Q-tips and he was being very stubborn and he was just not going to spit it out. Usually when he picks up things like, you know, paper towel pieces and things like that, and I speak in that tone, he drops it immediately. <sighs> I tried to go forcibly remove it for his, from his mouth, but he started growling. So that's always like a sign, you know, when he starts to get aggressive, that is, he's just not gonna let it go. And I just, I have to just trust that everything will be okay. Oh, I can't even talk about my book. This animal. He's so cute, but he's just so stubborn. Teddy, come here, Teddy. Come here. See, see what I mean? Come here, come here. Ignoring me, as per usual. Come here, come here. Come here, Teddy. Come here, boy. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, come here. He's three years old and he still acts like a little puppy. Come here. Come here. You don't want to say hi to the people? No. No. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, little love bug. My life. All right, let's go. Let's go, Teddy. Let's go. Finally made it back inside after that walk and I'm gonna do some reading and then I'm gonna do edit a video I have a video that's going up on the NaNoWriMo main channel so NaNoWriMo's YouTube channel I'm not sure when but if the video is already up by the time y'all see this video then it will be linked at the top you can go check it out but I have to edit that video and send that to them with like my thumbnail and all the information I want in the description box and all that. And that is due today. So I need to get on that at some point, but I do want to do some reading as well. It's been so long since I've done any reading. So hmm, what should I read? Let's see. So this book is really calling to me right now. Not really sure why, but I have been meaning to read it for ages, so I guess I will get started with that right now. <laughs> is this going to turn into a reading vlog as well? We shall see. Okay, so reading update. I am now on page 128, actually technically page 129, I'm about to go into chapter 17. And my thoughts about this book, there are really no likable characters, there's really no one I'm rooting for which is interesting but I still find myself liking the most unlikable character so Lada is just despicable but I still find myself like liking is a strong word enjoying her and enjoying reading from her pers like enjoying reading her perspective and being in her thoughts and enjoying her character and what she's contributing to the story I understand her motivations and her anger so I think that helps. And then the most vulnerable character, Ra um, Radu, I just feel like he's gonna die. He's just too pure, too good, and too weak for this world that they're in, and I feel like something tragic is going to happen to him. That's it in a nutshell. But I find it interesting how much religion plays a part in this story, like the battle between the Ottoman Empire and the rest of the world and therefore Islam versus Christianity. I didn't realize that that played such a huge role in this novel. So I'm learning a lot of interesting things and yeah, history, it's good stuff. Okay, so the lighthearted book I'm picking up. <laughs> no, but seriously though, I don't know why. I'm, I'm either in the mood to watch this or watch, no, read this or watch the first movie. I'll probably just end up watching the movie. 
I've been writing to the soundtrack, so it's just been on my mind a lot. I love writing to movie soundtracks, by the way, especially if you can find one that fits the atmosphere of your film, or your film. <laughs> I'm all twisted with my words. Fits the atmosphere of your novel, and as I'm writing a paranormal romance, this seems really fitting. So I've been listening to the Twilight, Twilight soundtrack a bunch while I've been writing, and now I like either want to read the book or watch the film. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I think I'm going to try reading. It's been a really long time since I've reread this. Years, in fact. I think the last time I reread this, I listened to the audiobook, which was actually really enjoyable. But I have a purpose for this. I have a Twilight video going up soon that I've been scripting for a while. So I feel like I need to reread the book in order to truly get in the vibe for the video. So it's been on my to-do list. <laughs> but I thought you guys would find this to be funny. Hello, fellow nanoers. Good evening. So, checking in. No writing happened at work. I feel like whenever I proclaim that I'm going to get writing done at work and it's going to be such a slow day and it's going to be fine, the actual opposite happens. We didn't have that many appointments, but the phones were just ringing off the hook. And usually on Mondays, a lot of people don't show up. And of course, today, everyone showed up for their appointment. So, it turned out to be quite hectic despite the light schedule. And I just hate writing when it's a hectic environment like that, especially because I'm not technically supposed to be writing at work. You know, that's not part of my job description. So it just gives me anxiety. So I end up just not doing it. So my goal was to hit 5K today. So I'm about to get started. I'm thinking about doing a write-in. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do it on YouTube or on, or on Instagram Live. I have more of a subscriber base on YouTube, but I'm kind of intrigued by Instagram Live and doing a write-in on there, so I'm going to try and see what that's about, I guess. We'll see. Hi guys, it's NaNoWriMo day 11, or no, right? No, day 12. Oh my gosh, it's day 12. And I am going to try to get caught up on my words. I am behind two days. So I'm just going to try to get caught up here and I just wanted to do a little write-in but I'm, always, I'm not sure like if you guys would tune in for that. So let me know if you're interested in doing a write-in with me this evening. It's going to be at 8pm. It is currently 6.08pm on the East Coast. So if I do a write-in at 8pm, are you guys down? Like who wants to write with me? Let me know. Let a girl know. Let your girl know. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go now before this gets any more awkward. Let me know. I have our Google Hangouts. This is Google Hangouts. So I'm trying to see if there is a group chat. So if you guys could do me a favor and write something in the chat, and I'll see if it shows up. So I'm trying to figure it out. Is there a chat? I don't know how this Google Hangouts thing works. All the wedding stuff and the bachelorette party was that night and then friday more wedding stuff and then she got married friday evening so and then my flight back home to north carolina was saturday morning at 8 50 a.m <laughs> so i was exhausted and i still wrote i still wrote i woke up early and wrote his wedding so i'm really proud of myself so i was just tired i needed a day to just breathe all right let's see what y'all are doing it is NaNoWriMo day 12, end of day 12, getting to, and you guys just saw the live stream that I just did, the write-in, um, if you were there, that's awesome, thanks, I feel like we've got like a great crew going, it's about 25 of us, we're always showing up for each other, and you guys are always coming through and showing up for me, which I really appreciate. And it doesn't matter how little notice I give y'all that I'm about to do a live show. You guys always show up for me, which I love, love, love that we're building that community here on my channel of writers who are supporting each other. That just really makes me feel good. For those who couldn't make it, no worries. It's, it's I'm sure, as you know, already posted on my channel because this vlog is going to go up much later than that live will be posted so I'm sure I hope that you've caught it by now um, and if you watched it for yourself but yeah so I'm still behind I'm currently at let's see 8,753 words and I should be at 9,999 
So I think I'm done for tonight though. I wrote myself into a corner and I just don't really know where to go from here. So I need to kind of ponder things a bit and try to figure out where to go from where I am and what my goal is and what I'm trying to accomplish right now with this story and where it is exactly. I know where I want to get to, but I just kind of have to figure out how to get there. So that will be for tomorrow. I wanted to write 5k today. I don't think I quite made it. I think I wrote about 3k, right? How much did I write? I was at like 15,000 when I started this or 16,000 or so. So maybe a little over 2k. Definitely wasn't a 5k day like I planned. So I'm hoping and praying that I can make tomorrow 5k day, but I'm going to stop putting pressure on myself and just try to figure out where the story is going and how to, I'm going to get there and then just write and stop worrying about word count. I was really successful doing Camp NaNoWriMo, Camp, I can't talk, Camp, Camp NaNoWriMo when I didn't focus on word count and I actually just counted the pages. I don't know, that really worked for me, but unfortunately with the writing software that I'm using, it's kind of impossible not to focus on the word count because that's how the writing software is set up. And then of course, NaNoWriMo is set up to care about word counts. So I'm going to try to mute that for the next few days and just figure out how to get to where I need to go and then just write and see what comes out and see what happens. All right, I'm going to say goodnight. It's getting late. It is 9.37 and I have to be at work at 7.30 a.m. tomorrow and I want to read a little bit of Twilight before I go to sleep. Oh, let me give you guys my thoughts on And I Darken by Kirsten White. Okay, so my thoughts. I have mixed emotions about this book. <sighs> I get it. Lara is supposed to be like this vicious... I don't even know. I don't know. Let me talk about it tomorrow because I feel like I can't get my thoughts out appropriately because it's so late. But just know that I have mixed emotions about it. I will talk more about it tomorrow. And I am enjoying the book, don't get me wrong. And things are finally starting to get really interesting in the plot. And I will definitely pick up reading it at some point once I feel like I'm caught up on Nano. But I have very mixed emotions about the way that Lara is, is written and how she's being portrayed. I believe she was supposed to like, isn't she supposed to be like a reincarnation of Vlad the Impaler or whatever or, right? Am I wrong? <sighs> I'll let you know my thoughts tomorrow. I'm tired right now <laughs> and incoherent. Okay. <laughs> Bye guys. See you tomorrow. Hi guys. It's NaNoWriMo day 13 and today is my day to catch up. I know I've said that a whole bunch since this week started, but I really mean it today. I was supposed to get home from work early, but things just kind of <sighs> dragged on at work and I didn't end up till leaving till pretty late. I was supposed to get home at 3.30 and I didn't leave until 5.15. So it is currently after five, I think it's like 5.30 something right now. So I'm going to take a shower and get into my pajamas and going to let the writing begin. I'm really excited to catch up. My goal is to get to 25k tonight and if I do I'm going to start um if I get to 25k tonight sorry this eye makeup is like done. You know like when your eye makeup has been on for over eight hours and you're like it's over. All your makeup and you're like it's over. It's time for it to come off. But um yeah 25k is my goal for this evening. I am currently at a little over 18,000 words so to get getting to 25k is quite a feat if I do achieve my goal I plan on editing I have so much footage that needs to be edited I haven't even put up one NaNoWriMo vlog which is a little intimidating because there's so much vlogging footage and so much editing to be done <sighs> just so much so little time but writing is my priority so definitely want to focus on getting those words in as opposed to putting up vlogs. I do want to say that I wanted to talk a little bit about my reading experience for And I Darken. I think I touched on it a little bit last night, but I was so tired. I just wanted to make sure that I would be able to express my thoughts um, coherently and fully. 
And I guess right now I'm having a love-hate relationship with Lara. Um, I just am tired of female protagonists who are supposed to be strong and tough written in such a masculine manner. And as much shit as people like to talk about the Throne of Glass series and Selena Sardothian and how unrealistic of a character she is and XYZ, I actually liked the fact that she was feminine and likes to wear dresses and likes to dress up and loves to feel beautiful and is beautiful and knows she's beautiful. I liked that she was so feminine but she's also, you know, an assassin and really good at killing basically and fighting and all those quote-unquote traditionally masculine um, traits, right? I liked the melding of the two and okay so whether or not Sarah J Mass does it well and does it in a believable manner is a whole nother discussion but I like the fact that she introduced Selena to us as a character that loved dress up, loved dresses, loved balls, loved makeup, loved all these feminine traits but also embodied these masculine traits at the same time. I liked the dichotomy of the two, the melding, the melding of the two and I liked the fact that she knew she was beautiful, right? And she used it to her own advantage. I feel that so often these tough girl female protagonists are written basically as men and men, you know, who are called female protagonists, but they're written as men. <sighs> I'm not being very coherent right now either. Blame it on the exhaustion of work. But yeah, so just struggle with that with in reading and I darken I struggle a lot with just feeling as if her character is basically a man and I think the character struggles with that as well I mean I got to a point in the story where she really contemplated the character Lada was contemplating whether she would have been more feminine and embraced more of the um, expectations of her gender at that time in history if she would have been more accepting of those expectations you know just basically to sit there be look pretty and be quiet and just be married off and to be used as a pawn basically for political clout or for whatever advantage her family could get right that's how women were viewed as objects and just pawns and tools back then and she was basically um she was basically contemplating whether she would have been more accepting of that role, that traditional female role, if she had been raised with her mother, because she was raised without her mother, if she had been raised with strong female role models and strong, or a, female, a strong female presence in her life. And she basically came to the conclusion that she would have never accepted that reality for herself. She was never accepting of that gender role and she would have always fought against it, rebelled against it, all that. So, nature versus nurture type of thing and she basically came to the conclusion on her own like no i would have never accepted this i would have never been okay with this no matter how many strong female role models i had or no matter how close i'd been with my mother growing up and all that in the third so i do like the fact that she contemplates the feminine a little bit but it's more like she contemplates the gender role of her of the time that she's born into and you know she rejects everything feminine about herself and even in the book several of the male characters joke and say that she's a man or does she want to be a man or is she aware that she's not a man and she always answers defiantly like yes i know i'm not a man like i know i'm a woman but she's jealous of the male characters and i mean we've seen this before right we've seen these before in these tough female protagonists where they're jealous of the male characters. I mean, I saw it a lot in literature growing up with like the more tomboyish um, female protagonists that I read about, even in children's fiction. You know, we have Jo from Little Women who really, really rebelled against her femininity for a long time because, not necessarily because of her femininity in itself, but because of what it, what that gender role was presented to her as at that time in history that she was born to. She didn't want to just be quiet and meek and demure and just get married and have children. And I completely understand women rebelling against those traditional archetypes. And 
not willing to just be seen as objects. I don't have a problem with that, but I do think that it takes a certain type of writer to write a nuance into that into that struggle, right? There's a tension there. There's a tension between struggling against the gender role of that time in history that you're having you're having to inhabit versus actually rejecting your femininity in itself. The softness about you, the compassion about you, the caring about you innate feminine traits that men also have you know all humans are born with male and feminine traits and characteristics that because of society were, were either encouraged to suppress or to over exaggerate you know one trait over the other depending on what what gender we're born into what gender role we're expected to take up and present successfully or pretend to present successfully to society so the issue for me is that there's not enough nuance written into these roles for these female protagonists where you really see the struggle between i'm embracing my feminine essence because yes this is who i am but i am rejecting this gender role this gender normative performance that i'm being forced to play or they're trying to force um force upon me i'm rejecting this there's a tension between the two and it's rarely seen in young adult, young adult fiction well, I, we either see you know all or nothing right we either see the character that's extremely feminine and therefore um exemplified and personified as weak and cloying and pandering and um gosh just seen as less than right whiny you know we see these female protagonists all the time oh she's ultra feminine which means she's weak and she's whiny and she's not going to be able to save herself she's always looking for a hero she's a princess sort right or she's that annoying character or she's the slutty character you know who's always exhibiting her physical and feminine charms and you know she's she's there to seduce one of the other characters right an overtly sexual representation or we see it go the other way as, as we have seen with Lada in And I Darken where she's overly masculine and suppresses all of her feminine traits. She despises crying. She de despises feeling strong emotions, even towards her closest relative, her brother, you know? She suppresses the love that she feels for him, the caring and the compassion. And when she does give into it, she regrets it immediately and sees it as a weakness. And I completely understand because of the world that she's born into, she's seen time and time, time again, people made examples of who have exhibited emotional weakness you know loving people caring for people these people have been killed these people have been stepped on and taken advantage of and she doesn't want to be in that position she wants to have power she craves power above all else and that's seen as an extremely masculine trait so i understand but it's just frustrating for me to see yet another strong powerful tough girl fighter type female protagonist that is that is written in such an overtly masculine way and the complete rejection of the feminine once again i just like there to be a little bit more duality i like there to be that tension there i think it's important to showcase a female protagonist that is really struggling and battling with both those sides you know if it's going to be about you know oh you know the times that i'm born into and i'm trying to reject you know the gender norms that are being pushed upon me if that's what we're going with then there needs to be a little bit more of a struggle between masculine and feminine traits as opposed to the complete rejection of one in favor of the other it's too extreme there needs to be more of a nuance in these characters more complexity and honestly i think that's why i enjoyed reading holly black's what was that novel i read at the beginning the cruel prince that's why i enjoyed that novel so much because the main character jude i think i think holly black did a really great job of writing in that tension you know not everyone loved that novel but that was one of the main reasons i really enjoyed reading that novel the tension was there all the way so i don't know if any of that was intelligible or understandable i don't know if i was able to get my thoughts across in a way that made sense but that's how I'm feeling about N.I. Darken at the moment. Things may change. I have not picked it back up since Sunday, so we'll see how I feel by the end of the novel. Hi guys, I'm getting some writing in. It is currently 7.49, and for writing inspo, I am listening to the live stream. It's Kat from Catty Tastic. 
Zoe from Zoe Reads and Haley from I think Haley in Bookland and uh, Hannah from a Clockwork, Clockwork Reader and I they're having a live stream going on right now about NaNoWriMo and they have some great tips tricks and all that and I'm listening to that as I write for writing inspiration look at this cute look at him I played myself. How cute is this little booba? So cute. I made it really subtle by acknowledging it entirely. Um, so our booktuber of the week is energetic and like I truly enjoy her. So we will have her link down below if you want to go and check out her stuff. Um, so yeah, that's our booktuber of the week this week. So that's gonna be it for this chapter of the bookmark. Thank you so much to Kat for joining us this week. Yeah, yeah thank you. Such a pleasure to have you. <laughs> um, so next week we are going to be on Hannah's channel, right? So. And we are going to be discussing fantasy. So all things fantasy books, all stuff like that. So it's going to be a, a really fun chapter. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I think I got everything right. That was good. I didn't miss anything. No, I think you Perfect. finally got on top of it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Just took me the whole entire life. So woo! All right, so thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you next week on Hannah's channel. Bye! Bye! Bye. Hi guys, it is NaNoWriMo day 14 and I'm just now getting time to film. I was busy at work and yeah, I haven't gotten any writing in today, but I'm about to start writing in just a little bit. I just filmed a video from my main channel, main channel, like I have more than one channel. I mean, technically I do, but I never ever post on the other channel. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> I just filmed a video for my channel. I hope you guys like it. If you get to see it before this one goes up, if not, I will put it right here so you can go check it out. But yes, I am going to start writing. I'm going to take a shower, get all this makeup off, get like some tea or something like that, and then get started on my words for today. I'm very excited to get into it. I left off on a very particularly like interesting scene that I was working on last night, so I'm excited to get back to it. Mm, just a little hyper, just a little bit, just a little bit. So it's NaNoWriMo day 15, and last night i think i got my word count up to gosh let's see where did i get up to last night i didn't write a ton last night i'm still technically behind according to NaNoWriMo but i am at 22,158 22,158 words, yes. So I'm gonna try to hit 24K by the end of today. So we'll see how successful I am at accomplishing that. I'm not really gonna stress myself out though because I'm off tomorrow and I think I'm gonna do a write-a-thon tomorrow. I'm not doing anything crazy like 24 hours or anything like that, but I think I'm gonna wake up around nine and try to write until about two or three. So let's see, that's, that's like a five to six hour write-a-thon. I think that's doable, because I have a lot of other things to do tomorrow too, you know, laundry and errands and such. So that'll be my goal. I'm gonna try to write five or 10K tomorrow during my write-a-thon. Today, I mostly just wanna get to 24K and then I'm gonna spend a lot of time like plotting I know I started pantsing when I was doing this project, but pantsing can only go so far, I've learned. And after a while, things start to get entangled and confusing, and you start to write yourself in circles, and you're not really sure where the story is going. So I'm going to take some time today to just kind of plot out my next steps and 
exactly what I want to say now moving forward in the story now that it's like really getting into the actual story and things are really starting to happen so that's my goal for today that's what this is all about I mean dare I quote Miley Cyrus here but you know it's not necessarily the ending destination it's the climb of the mountain it's the climb okay sorry <laughs> it's always gonna be tough it doesn't matter whether you're an aspiring writer or you're a seasoned published author it is always gonna be tough but the key is in those moments when you feel like giving up you gotta keep going because you're this close to getting where you want to be I promise so hang in there and for those of you that are killing NaNoWriMo, keep going. I'm so proud of you. I love the excitement that surrounds NaNoWriMo. And I think all of you that are doing it and tackling it and just going after it, I'm so proud of you. And keep going. You're halfway there. And for those of you that have hit this halfway point and you are just in the pit of despair, hang in there. It gets better. You can do this. Keep fighting. Keep pushing. And believe in yourself. Because you're worth it. So, all right, guys. That's Get out of the grass. Get out of the grass. Come on. No, no. Hi, guys. It is NaNoWriMo day 15 and I am struggling. I am having a really, really tough time and maybe if I talk it out with you all, then things will get better. I just woke up from, gosh, like a three hour nap. I actually got home from work early today. I went in early, so I got off early and I got home around three maybe a little after 3 and I just got up and it is currently like about to be 6 p.m. No writing has been done today. Today is supposed to be the halfway mark of NaNoWriMo. I'm supposed to be, sorry I keep looking down, I'm um, unlock, unlocking my computer because I'm thinking of doing some editing to get more of these nano vlogs up for y'all but like I was saying today is supposed to be the halfway point of NaNoWriMo. I'm supposed to be at at 25k today because it's day 15 and we have 15 days left and I'm just really having a tough time this is the hardest NaNoWriMo I have ever done and I don't know what's going on this is the hardest story I've ever written and the old me from three years ago would just give up on this story on and, and like start revising an old project or start writing another story or like start writing a short story collection or something like that but something in my soul will not allow this story to go something in my heart is telling me that the reason this story is so hard for me to write is because it's really important and it's weird because it's not the story that I've been the most passionate about or the most passionate to write it's not the story that I've looked forward to writing the most it's not the story that I've felt the strongest for or that has been the dearest to my heart. And I think that's part of the reason I'm, I'm having a hard time writing it, but also because there are a lot of factors, you know? That's part of it, but it's also because I didn't outline the story beforehand, so I went into this process really unprepared for what the story was. And you guys saw me struggling to find a plot, and you guys saw that the story's changed, and and it's paranormal romance now and all these things you guys have been watching my struggles but something just won't allow me to let this story go and allow this story to die and I just feel something in my gut is telling me to stick with it and this story is really important and I don't know how yet and I don't know what any of this means but I just can't let it go and I have to push through but that doesn't mean that I'm not frustrated and that I am not at my wits end I just I've never struggled to write words like this before in my life like and it's not a mental block it's just this this weird place where I don't know where the story is going and I don't know what's going on I'm realizing now that I'm gonna have to do a lot of research because this story has introduced a lot of my heritage into the story not my personal heritage but um, I'm using a lot of language from one of the Nigerian tribes that's somewhat close to my father's tribe but not really 
they're somewhat from the same area so I'm using a lot of their languages and I need to look up traditions and um, a lot of Nigerian traditions I need to look up and educate myself so I'm gonna have to do a lot of research and I'm probably gonna have to have some conversations with my father and just get some things straight and that's not even the issue I'm just having a really hard time I'm just really frustrated I don't I don't know what to do so I've been putting off writing because I'm just really frustrated I'm just tired I hate that this is so hard for me I'm sorry if my thoughts are all over the place I literally just woke up I feel like I want to cry but I don't the tears just aren't coming right now I almost cried at work today thinking about it I was watching this video that Kim Chance put up and it really helped me. It was like a NaNoWriMo pep talk, very similar to the pep talk that I gave y'all last week. And it was what I needed, but at the same time, it made me feel really emotional. And I'm someone that cries easily, but doesn't cry often. I try to kind of suck things up and kind of push it, keep it, keep it pushing. I try to keep positive vibes and positivity, and I try to look on the bright side of life and things like that. I'm a realist, but I'm also an idealist at the same time and I don't like to cry and I don't like for things to get me down and I just like to kind of swallow it and just keep it pushing but I might need to just have a good cry over the situation because I'm so frustrated I think I'm gonna spend a couple hours tonight trying to come up with an outline to see what's going on and see if I can figure out a way out of this hole that I've kind of written myself into <sighs> talking to you guys is help is helping is helpful and help helping <laughs> this is one of the hardest writing experiences of my life and that is so strange because this will be the fourth novel I've written in the past five years I just I don't understand I don't get it Whew. gonna push through guys we're gonna push through um, a variation of something similar to this happens to me every single NaNoWriMo because it is so many words in such a short amount of time it creates a pressure cooker of sorts but also creates this amazing opportunity for so much creativity and growth in your art and growth in your craft and I never took a writing class like a formal writing class I mean I took playwriting classes in college but I'm, I didn't go to school as you know to write it's something I've done ever since I was little and I've, I've sort of self-educated myself and and because of that there's always been this underlying insecurity that I'm, I'm not good enough and you know with the few rejections that I've been through with past projects I definitely fuels that thought that I'm just not good enough and I'm never going to be able to make a career out of this even though this is this is damn it I do not want to cry this is all I've ever wanted to do is be a writer and get my stories out there and be able to make a living publishing my work. I don't want to cry on this channel. I really don't. Hmm. But there's always been this underlying insecurity that I'm not good enough. And that my work will never make it out there into you guys' hands. <laughs> and I know that that's not true. And that's just a lie of the devil. And I need to believe in myself and I do guys honestly you guys are just seeing me at a low point I do believe in myself I absolutely do and I do know that I'm talented and I do know that I, my voice is important and my stories matter and that I have something to offer the world and my art matters I know that but that doesn't help the feeling and 
going through the motions of insecurity and doubt and fear. I mean, it's part of the human condition. And something that Kim Chan said in the vlog today that really helped me is that everything that I want is on the other side of fear and is pushing past fear and sort of despite your fear continuing on and that's kind of why I'm not ready to give up on this story because this story scares me the fact that I can't figure it out the fact that I can't push through right now the fact that this may be the first NaNoWriMo I don't win ever you know in the years I've been doing this there is a very distinct fear and I need to keep going and push past that despite the fear and I don't want to take the easy way out because it would be so easy to just give up on the story and just start working on it my short story collection again or start working on revising a past project and I would get 50,000 words like that like you know whatever words I could get from working on something else or even something new plus the words I've already generated thus far a little over 22,000 words 50k would be a breeze and I would once again win NaNoWriMo and I would have that clout and I would be able to shout it from the roof rooftops and and be congratulated and, and adulated for that but that's not what this is about for me I feel like there's something here there's some gold here there's some treasure here that's hidden that I need to mine for and it's it's the moments like this that make us better writers that make us better creators the moments that teach us to push past the fear and to push past the difficulties and to push past the tough stories to get to the heart of things to be able to tell the story that deserves to be told to do the characters justice you know to do yourself justice as a creator to not give up at the sign of, of you know huge obstacles and I feel like it's good training to be traditionally published because as a traditionally published author there are so many things that go into it you know there's a discipline you have to learn how to write on a deadline you have to learn how to produce work in a timely manner um, a time that is you know orchestrated by others by your editor or your publishing company you have to learn how to make the story come out of you when they want the story to come out of you and that's something that I definitely want to learn and something I want to get good at to hone that part of my craft because I do want to be traditionally published and maybe this is God's way of putting me through the fire and teaching me that because I do believe that my stories come from him and my ideas come from him because my talent comes from him and I have I have slacked in my faith in this area recently you know just that lack of faith and feeling discouraged but thanks for being my ter my therapist guys this is definitely helping me I'll be able to go into my outlining with a much more positive outlook sometimes it just helps to talk it out I think I'm gonna pray I'm gonna read my Bible I'm gonna get back into a positive space and I'm just gonna give all of these concerns and worries over to God and pray and just know that he's going to work it out. And he's gonna help me untangle this, this very messy web that I've woven <laughs> of this story. And just, he always has helped me out before. So I know he will help me again. And just like that, it became a sermon. <laughs> but yes, I'm gonna go ahead and edit um, Let's see, so far I have Nano days one and two, the vlogs up, so I'm gonna go ahead and edit days three and four. Maybe I can do days three through five or six or something. I have got to get these vlogs up. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'm going to outline. So I will check back in with you guys um, after I have prayed and spent some time with the Lord and read my Bible and I will get back to you guys right before I outline and then we will proceed from there. All right guys. 848 words in chapter two. I feel like that's not too far off from where I was when I left work. So 2848, 2848. So I am editing nano vlogs three, four, and five. Yes, three, four, and five right now. And it is a stormy night. It has been raining 
every day since Monday here. So I'm going to get some, I feel like I'm not looking at you guys. Oh, I'm going to get some reading in Twilight right here. So I think it's a perfect night to read Twilight. I haven't written anything yet. I haven't outlined and haven't prayed or read my Bible yet. It's 714, so I'm going to read Twilight. I'm going to pause on the editing. I feel like I just need some reading. So I'm going to read Twilight until about 8. I'm going to pray and read my Bible till about 8.45 when I'm going to take a shower. Then when the clock hits 9, I'm going to start outlining. Then hopefully I can write from about 10 to 11 and then I'll go to sleep. 11 to 12 is usually my bedtime. So that's my night outlined. Um, and then I'm going to take a break on this editing just because... Editing consumes me, and if I keep going, that's all I'm going to do tonight, and I'm not going to stop until this video is completely edited and complete and then scheduled to be posted, and I just don't want to be consumed by that right now. I feel like it's more important for me to get these words out and to get this outline out and to figure out what's going on with my story, but in order to get there, I need to do my self-care steps and kind of work my way up to it. So that's my plan for the evening. I think my shirt is very appropriate for what I'm going through right now. And it says, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it says, let your faith be bigger than your fear. And if that is not exactly what I'm going through right now, I don't know what it is. I've got my hair up. You know, I mean business when I've got my scrunchie on. When I've got my scrunchie on, I mean business. Let's see. Titling this. Um, words are escaping me. Titling this editing project, Nano Days 4, no, 3, 2, 5. Saving that project. And putting my laptop away. Gonna get some reading in and see what's going on with Bella and Edward. I haven't been able to get past chapter 2, so maybe I'm not really in the mood to read Twilight like I think, but it's fine because I'm gonna force it to happen. I need to make this Twilight video before November is over, and I need to read Twilight before I make that video. Priorities. 